I think we should explain that statelessness is a human rights issue. In, in many cases, people feel like as if they do not exist, that they are not recognized. In a way, those people are outside um, the international human rights law regime. They don't have identity documentation, they don't have freedom to travel. Uh, depending on the country they live in, they're not allowed to go to school, they don't have access to public health services. Statelessness is not only lacking in nationality, but in practice it's to be denied many basic human rights that everyone is entitled to and most of us take for granted. We need to fix that. I had the privilege of seeing it becoming from an idea in a little project to this huge network encompassing members all over Europe, which is pretty magic, really. The, the key engines behind the project, Laura van Vast and uh, Chris Nash, uh, Gabor and some others, uh, had a dinner in Budapest and sort of that was the inaugural de facto informal launching dinner of the ENS. I was involved with ENS before it had a name. Uh, we were just a group of people who were all really interested to do more work on statelessness and didn't really have the right channel in which to cooperate to do that and started to develop this idea of an organisation that would be dedicated towards connecting people up and building capacity. When you were looking for information on statelessness, you were looking for some, some intelligence on, on how to understand the concepts or, or, or how to resolve this problem. There was literally nothing available. There was no uh, guidance by the UNHCR yet. There was no academic literature, hardly any academic literature. There were about five people literally working on this topic in, in Europe and even less beyond. Within a few weeks we'd uh, organised a meeting in London where Gabor and I were joined by other amazing colleagues such as Laura, Ivanka and Malin Sebastian and it was one of those meetings where the energy in the room was such that within a couple of hours we'd come up with a name, a mission statement and plans for a website and things really mushroomed from there. Um, to the point that now, 10 years later, we have a staff team of 10 and a membership straddling 41 European countries. I think one of the most memorable moments, and it's not only one because it was kind of spread across the last few months, was definitely um, meeting Chris and Tamara and Jan uh, and Joe and Nina <laughs> and Patricia for the first time. It didn't even feel it as if it's been the first time, so it felt very close already. And I think that's just basically because we've been in contact for so long. It's a network, and networks can play really crucial kind of ecosystem-wide roles in nurturing sort of range of groups across a region, in this case, Europe. Obviously, European Network on Statelessness had done a, a tremendous work um, when it comes to not only bringing recognition and, and, and connecting the activism across Europe with their members, but also leading the policies and, and, and leading the agenda on international level when it comes to statelessness. On a professional level, it has given us the opportunity to get involved, and the resources, to get involved in, in, in many more of the cases that otherwise and without the support we probably wouldn't have had the capacity to take on. So it has increased both our expertise, our interest, on the issue and our capacity to get involved with more statelessness cases. If we uh, handle the litigation cases by ourselves, it was not enough for us. We needed how to wide our, our picture on the statelessness issues. We needed how to take the good practices for other countries. Uh, you know, it's really inspiring, actually, because uh, I believe that without support of uh, such a high number of like-minded people, we will not be able to achieve uh, s such a good achievements in these last uh, five years, actually. ENS uh, includes everything you need 
to work effectively on statelessness. You have the network, you have um, the expertise, you know what it means to be stateless and you know how it can be solved. My experience being engaged with ENS has been really en enriching and anytime we contacted to them in order to, to have their participation in our events or trainings, they, they all, always were fully collaborative, they, they came to Spain, they participated in, in, in our online events. There are in parallel several initiatives that we are actively involved in, like the Statelessness Index, like uh, in the previous years we had strategic litigation. We also had um, a field study on detention of stateless persons. Um, currently we have um, uh, a project in which we interview Palestinian refugees and we do communication work with Palestinian refugees. Previously we had a communication work with uh, stateless children. So all the time we are busy, we are doing something and this is something meaningful, something that gives an added value to our daily work on the ground. For me that is kind of power because when we are talking, for example in Montenegro, with our partners, institutions or representatives of government, we always mention European network on statelessness. It is somehow different when we have a support from some international organization and organization which is recognized in the European level. I believe that uh, huge success that we had uh, in uh, like a year ago in cooperation with UNHCR, with the NS, with other national partner when Ukraine introduced a statelessness determination procedure. Um, I believe it has become a co a result of uh, you know these joint efforts, including ENS, and the NS took a huge part in this actually. I feel like at least very recently one of the most impactful things out of my perspective was the quick response to the Ukraine uh, war um, because for example in our community we were able to use the information that was shared um, and it was shared very quickly actually and it was a very quick response from ENS and we were able to use that information and share it with our audience as well. The Bulgaria, although it is a small country, it has a number of achievements that it can be proud of, like, uh, for example, the, we have the statelessness determination procedure and there are not so many countries in the world that have such a procedure. So there are also things that we can say, wow, okay, so we are doing good, but we can do better. We realize that sometimes the fight to end statelessness happens through the courts. And one way which we've tried to galvanize and support strategic litigation is through our statelessness case law database, which we launched last year and which really enables us to, to, to drive through the change you know, via the courts and to really help improve the lives of stateless people on the ground. The case law database is that bridge between legal practitioners across Europe and case law anywhere in Europe, including um, case law by the two major courts, European Court of Human Rights and Court of Justice of the EU. And that bridge is one of the strongest tools that we have to build our cases, both domestically and on European level. I think the Statelessness Index is probably the most ambitious tool that ENS has created so far. So it takes a really um, kind of a multifaceted topic and it breaks it down into little pieces where you can ask a question and the index will tell you for one country or allow you to compare information across countries. So it's really great because if you want to know what's going on with statelessness and statistics in the UK, you can find information really quickly. Having the index is a useful resource, not only for the advocacy work that, for example, crystallized in in drafting the amendment to the civil code and finding gaps on, on the facilitation of naturalization for stateless persons living in Spain, but also for legal practitioners that have been uh, challenging the Spanish authorities 
in the case of a children born in transit to Spain that arrived with no documents. I think the value of statelessness index is not only the comparison that you can make between the countries, but also that it comes from the field. It's cross-checked, it's very accurately uh, researched, it comes from both uh, theory and practice. And I really, I believe it's one of the most impressive tools that ENS has come up with and, you know, with support from UNHCR, obviously. Even we are a very, very modest organization, but when you have the clear objectives or clear goals, you and you have the very good partners uh, in the region, like European Network on Statelessness, you can do uh, very, very important uh, things. And we have arrived such a thing, and we have changed the legislation on civil status law for birth registration which has been a very big success in 2018. The stateless uh, journeys was, I think, a very good one. And uh, again, unmatched, uh, this grasping stateless in the migratory context and, and creating a, a research project and also a campaign on, on that, uh, which reflected or resonated to the 2015-16 European migration refugee crisis. It was, I think, a very smart move. So it resonated. It, it, it I think, uh, made a big noise in a good, good way. You know, what I think was the moment when I really found that the network had arrived was back at a conference in Budapest in 2015 when we, we launched our Stateless Kids campaign, you know, and doing that in front of a sea of faces at a big regional conference at a time when we were a relatively young organization with limited resources. The fact that through that campaign we did research in over 10 countries, we organised the Youth Congress and several other advocacy events and galvanised uh, an online campaign and an online petition signed by over 22,000 people was, was really remarkable and you know, a true testament to the engagement of our members and supporters. We know we're not alone and that's what's important to know that your community or my community isn't the only one who are victim of a very, very flawed system. And these systemic failures are not just targeting you, but us and people like us. Ten years ago, we were not talking about institutional accountability on stateliness. Ten years ago, we didn't have any specific laws that would address stateliness or would um, somehow engage institutionally to fix some of the vicious problems the stateless community were facing. Before, you know, 10 years ago, even if people knew about statelessness, it was more about outside of Europe, somewhere in Asia, in Africa, somewhere else. Um, but nobody really thought that we actually have statelessness in Europe as well. And I think that's a big um, success of NS that they brought it on the table of regional organizations as well, which probably before had not focused so much or did not work on that through the lenses of statelessness. This is also important. If you want to change anything at the, at the regional level or the international level, it just doesn't make sense trying to do that individually as national organisations. You need to find ways to find that joint messaging, kind of what's the key priority, and you know present it as, as really a pressing issue. And so joining forces, putting something under the label of ENS, having the secretariat being able to play that role of approaching regional authorities is so important. And then to take that to the EU in Brussels and say, this is the gap in your policy and you need to listen. There's no other way of doing it, I don't think, that will actually achieve what you're trying to achieve. Working you know, with our members, we've achieved a multiplier effect in countries across Europe. But also our members have given us the, the authority to, to insist that this issue be placed higher up the agenda of both the EU and the Council of Europe and other regional institutions. Now we have uh, a large community of people in Europe who know about statelessness and who are empowered and prepared to tackle this human rights situation.
Another aspect of ENS that's impressive is their commitment to reign accountable to and embedded within uh, communities who are experiencing statelessness. And I think this is a really genuine uh, impulse on their behalf that they're really operationalizing in a committed way. I've been part of the board of trustees since April last year. I was extremely surprised about <laughs> being asked to join the board and also very, very, very honored about this opportunity. And it has been a very interesting role also because I always feel like I'm in a hybrid position of a person who has experienced statelessness itself, a person who um, is a member of the network, an individual member, um, but then also a person who works on the issue. I would be in a forum, I would be in a group chat, for example, with other stateless people and from different community, whether that's uh, uh, that, that, that us or the Roma community, etc, etc. It made sure that we knew we weren't alone in this fight against statelessness and it made sure that, that we got the necessary support from other communities, not just ENS. So it, the ENS was appealing because it brought us all together. Ensuring that stateless people inform and deliver our mission is a key objective under our strategic plan. And I'm really proud of the progress we've made in implementing our community engagement strategy, in diversifying our membership to include many more stateless people. Working with the youth of my community and teaching them what it means to be stateless and teaching them about their own identity and by the end of that day everyone within that room came out being proud of their own identity and being able to tell people what they were and they were proudly telling the camera oh i am a rohingya like i'm not a victim i'm a survivor that was their that was their line for us from a subjective point of view it's being able to inspire the youth of the british rohingya community in the very beginning, when we started with the first project with DNS, we started to work directly with people who are at risk to be stateless. And all of them say to us, we thought that all of the organizations or institutions don't care about us. And that was a moment when the people from the Roma community uh, saw that uh, uh, they can count on the legal support from our organization and ENS. It was a huge campaign with different events. I remember that there were many individual stateless people telling their own story about why they were stateless and what it meant to them. That was very impressive. That had a huge impact on me and I think on more people who were listening. Uh, I keep on thinking of those individual stories that they told me. And that's really necessary when you talk about the general policies that are needed to immediately individualize it and, and, and think about persons, uh, you know, with names whose life would be improved with these uh, solutions. What I'm hopeful for is that through being connected to one another, we can continue to have the same level of enthusiasm that change will come if we just keep at it. We need to persist, uh, but I'm sure that gradually, step by step, we will gain more achievements in getting people really into the society, whatever their background uh, or status is. I also hope that uh, we will stay united that the European Network on Statelessness uh, will remain as strong as it is now, or even stronger, um, that we remain as engaged as now in a lot of meaningful activities that um, give an added value to our daily work. I think statelessness is a problem that can be solved. So if not completely eradicated, I'd, I'd like to see a significant reduction in statelessness cases in the areas of the world where this is achievable. In, I think in Europe, we can get very close to eradication of statelessness. Um, and it's something that we'll work together with the, with the NS towards. I think that we have the, the energy, the expertise and the passion. So hopefully we can match that up with the resourcing we need to meet our ambitions. Together, 
we really can make a difference.